Council Member Harris? Council Member Wynn? Here. Council Member Newsma? Here. Council Member Burns? Here. Council Member Sufferton? Here. Council Member Revell? Oh, there she is. Um, Council Member Reed? Council Member Revell is here for the record. Um, Council Member Heracaris? Here. And Mayor Biss? Here. Uh, we have a quorum and present and are prepared to do our work. The first item on the agenda is my public announcements and proclamations. There are none. The next item on the agenda is the city manager's public announcements. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. No announcements tonight. Uh, the next item on the agenda is communications from the city clerk. Um, we got a few um, email public comments. Eric Pitt um, for the uh, contract of Hacienda Landscaping. Um, R.J. Coleman. Um is against the pickleball, Nina Barrett uh, supports the ARPA funds for small um, brick and mortar businesses. Quentin Hersig um, in support of the Evanston Skate Park. Um, XC, um, there was not a full name in the comment against the HODC project. Peter and Susan Kelly, uh, Fourth Ward residents in support of rebuilding um, of Ryan Field and uh, Sewell Lowback um, in support of the HODC project and then also a, um, a letter on affordable housing from CABG. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. This brings us to public comment for the evening. Uh, because this evening there are just under 15 people giving comment, everyone will be given uh, three full minutes. Uh, we begin, as always, by those who signed up in person to speak in person, uh, beginning with Roberta Hudson, who will be followed by Tina Payden, and then Mike Vasilko. My name is Roberta Hudson, community organizer. Um, I'm coming to you this evening to ask that you deny the uh, ordinance uh, C-26, I believe, 1801 church. Uh, <clears throat> 25 years ago, I'll say it again, um, the Foster Park Neighbors, the organization that I started from the block club. Uh, several block clubs joined with us because they saw we were interested in changing the atmosphere and things that were happening in our community. And we met at Fleetwood Jordan every month, over 40 some people every month for the last 20, over 25 years. And we wanted to help our community improve. Uh, the state, um, um, we received uh, a staff member from uh, the, uh, the state to conduct a survey of our neighborhood, which we had over 400 residents that we contacted and the result was they were interested in helping our children to get off the corners and out of trouble and they wanted a after school program for technology where they could become productive citizens. Uh, over 25 years ago we developed a plan, a west side development plan which was to include a training center in that area. It would be tied into the high school and, uh, and with the, uh, the um, Oakland Community College for certification of skill center training. 
they didn't listen to us then. They still have not listened to us. As a result, our children are not receiving the benefits that they should for now and for their future. When are we going to listen to what the community wants? When are we going to try to have benefits and plan programs for our children and their future instead of having programs that benefit people who live in Winnetka and Northbrook? 15 seconds. And uh, that's why I'm saying the community is disgusted, the people are disgusted that you haven't listened to us in these years, and um, I hope that you'll listen to them now. That's all I have to say. Thank you very much. And the next speaker is Tina Payton, who will be followed by Mike Vasilko and then Carla Sutton. Good evening, everyone. First of all, at the last meeting, you heard many residents within the 500 feet of the property on Church and Darrow properties saying they wanted not to build a building. Then there was significant changes to the building and you disregarded that too. When we vote for you as aldermen, we expect that you hear our voice, not your own voice for your own profit, for your own pocket. So hear the citizens of Evanston, please listen closely. When it is time for you to vote, remember who threw you under the bus because it happens all the time. This city is being sold for their own pockets. Pay attention, citizens of Evanston. They're using your money so they can gain income for their own profit. As some of the residents stated before, that Alderman Burns and Alderman uh, Devon Reed are being paid off by connections with their rent money every month. Citizens of Evanston, that's your money. Paying the Alderman's rent, who needs to recuse themselves from this project as well as other projects. Now, if we do further investigation on some of the other aldermen and the mayor, how many other projects will we find your hands in the pockets of the developer? You need to deny this project. I know it's just from introduction tonight. Many people had to leave, and they feel like you are not representing us. Who voted for you? Who are you representing? Look in the mirror tonight and ask that question to yourself. Are you representing the public? Who came out here in droves and spoke? And one person spoke in favor and you still voted the way you wanted to, not what the citizens wanted. 15 seconds. Some people need to be investigated and start going to the doc. That's the Department of Corrections. How many low income are in the sixth ward, the seventh ward, the third ward, and the first ward? None. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mike Vasilko, who will be followed by Carlos Sutton. Just briefly, I want to follow up on what Tina said. It was really embarrassing, I thought, to um, witness so many residents who live so close to these properties completely in your ears one way and out the other. It was remarkable. Uh, Local government shouldn't be like that. You represent the people. The people should ask you and tell you what they want. 
that's the way it should work. But I'm here for uh, the special order of business. It shouldn't be a special order of business. Um, it seems like we've done this three times now in a rush to push through something where more public discussion is needed. And uh, it's, I see it as an abuse of uh, authority and it suppresses uh, the public participation in the process. On SP1, the ARPA funds, no one on the council has been advocating for more funds to be dedicated to climate action. And that's what I'm here for. Uh, again, uh, the list presented to you to empty out the ARPA fund accounts. There's a lot of items on there that are coming back for second and third helpings from ARPA. You get, and, and this one that keeps coming back, the $613,000 for barricades, so we can look like a police state, uh, that's something that keeps popping back up, not something that's needed. An additional $350,000 for the living room, and that is their second or third bite at the apple, among other things that are on that list. But no climate change, no climate action funding uh, to support the goals of the city. The climate crisis is enormous. Look at the UN reports, look at California, all the coastal states that are experiencing dramatic storms, ice caps breaking and melting, and Evanston pollution is contributing to all of these events. And that's why the council, I believe, uh, declared a climate emergency nearly a year ago. And yet there's been no substantial climate action because there's been no substantial climate action funding. There's a little chipping at the edges, but nothing of any merit. So again, I ask, what, what does this council have against spending mon more money on, to combat climate action? I, I, I just don't understand it. It's a mystery, like not listening to your constituents is a mystery. You are voting tonight on a nearly $2 million skate park. 15 is seconds. A, is a skate park more important than climate change? Is it? Is it really? So I'm asking somebody on the council to step up. Please move to provide funding from the remaining ARPA funds for climate action. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Mr. Carlos Sutton. Good evening. I'll be brief. It just amazes me about the total insensitivity that people who do not want public housing or affordable housing in their ward can dictate to people whose property will be adversely affected. You are some of the most cold-blooded and sensitive people I've ever seen in my life. This is redlining 2023. Court says you can't redline. Thank you very much. Uh, could we please have order in the chamber so that everyone's public comment can be uh, heard and considered? Um, we will move now to those who signed up. Um, can we have quiet in the chamber, please? There's, there's, it's important that everyone's comment be heard equally. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, we move now to those who signed up online to speak in person. Uh, of whom the first is Andrew Fuderman, who will be followed by Patrick Keenan Devlin. Is an Andrew Fuderman here to give public comment? Uh, seeing as, uh, as there's no Andrew Fuderman, uh, the next speaker is Patrick Keenan Devlin. And again, I'd like to ask for quiet in the chamber to make sure this comment can be heard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the city council. Uh, could we please have quiet until, uh, so that Mr. Keenan Devlin's comment can be heard? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I am Patrick Keenan Devlin, and I proudly serve as the Executive Director of the James B. Moran Center for Youth Advocacy, an integrated legal and social work agency here in the city of Evanston. And I'm appearing tonight just to give brief comments to express the Moran Center's gratitude for the city of Evanston's community development staff, 
for their uh, successful efforts in securing additional funds for community-based case management and safety net services. So just, I wanna say thank you so much for your efforts. The Marin Center now urges the council to approve the revised allocation recommendations reflected in your agenda, item SS1, to ensure that the most vulnerable members of our community receive ongoing critical supports in order to navigate both public systems and to ultimately thrive. I urge your support. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. We now move on to those who signed up to speak online, uh, beginning with Michael Hoff, who will be followed by Declan Schliesman and then Cindy Castro. Is Michael Hoff in the Zoom? <clears throat> yep, we can hear you. Oh, you can, okay. Um, well, based on the, the meetings an hour and 45 minutes late and uh, the fact that in the A&P committee, <clears throat> you already answered my question that uh, the um, skate park portion of the twigs redevelopment is being subcontracted to a high quality uh, specialty builder. Um, very happy about that. And I, I just want to um, pass on the rest of my time. But thanks so much for all that you do to lead the city and uh, appreciate it. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Declan Schleisman, who will be followed by Cindy Castro, and then Darlene Cannon. Looks like Declan Schleisman is not in the Zoom, so we'll move on with Cindy Castro, who will be followed by Darlene Cannon and then Doreen Price. Good evening, Mayor Best, City Manager Stowe, Clerk Mendoza, and Council members. I'm Cindy Castro, one of the co-chairs of the Mental Health Task Force of Evanston and manager of the Outpatient Behavioral Health Clinic at Ascension St. Francis. On behalf of the task force, we wanted to offer our support on the revised allocation recommendations that will be presented today from the Social Services Committee, item SS1. And just to extend a sustained thank you to all of you. Thank you for taking our calls, texts, emails, and even meeting with some of us to further discuss our concerns and advocate for an increase in funding for much needed case management, safety net, and support services. Thank you to Sarah Flax and her team for the extra work that they put in to make this happen. Your actions demonstrate commitment to crucial services and helps acknowledge the work that our community-based organizations have been and continue to do. We hope to keep collaborating with the city to further advocate as this helps, but does not solve the ongoing gaps in funding for these specific services. We truly appreciate being heard. Thank you once again. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Darlene Cannon, who will be followed by Dorian Price. Thank you, Darlene Cannon, second ward. I'm in support of the funding for the small business um, assistance program. Um, I think it's long overdue. I think um, our small businesses are still trying to recover from the pandemic and we should be asked, we should have asked them, you know, what it is that they need in order for them to get back to some level of normalcy. And I think that, you know, going forward before we create new ordinances that are going to impact them, that we should, um, take the time to, to actually talk to them, collaborate with them and hear what their what their feedback is. Um, because in the end, we are making decisions that will be impacting their lives. My next thing is going back to the HODC. You know, it's very disheartening to hear um, that the residents in the second and fifth ward were their, their, their feelings. Um, for their feelings, and not only their feelings, what was in the consolidated plan for this area has been disregarded, and their concerns, and um, yeah, it's just, you know, it's just a travesty given the fact that many of the residents um, live right adjacent to the waste station and experience, you know, the effect of the waste station and large rodents 
and now we're going to add a lot more density. And I do believe that um, this is monitorized um, redlining in which we only seem to be able to put this type of housing in certain areas and then we cite that land is cheaper over there. It's really insulting. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next speaker is Dorian Price. Ms. Price, are you able to unmute? Okay. Oh. Thank you. <laughs> now I'm unmuted. Thank you. Yep, go ahead. Sorry. Hi. It's Doreen Parks. Okay, thank you. Um, so uh, just a minute, I sort of lost my train of thought here. Um, so uh, there's an article that I wrote, that, I mean, that I read that's entirely relevant, especially with regard to Mike, what Mike said and some others said previously. So I want to include that as well. And it's an article called How Cities Can Tackle Both Affordable Housing and Climate Change. And it's housing matters, housing matters .urban org, and it's November 2nd, 2022. And uh, the addition, additional part of that is that demographics, as you've heard discussed, um, can kind of mask opportunities that are within wards of people who could help with regard to looking at natural affordable housing and trying to increase those opportunities there with seniors and the like and people who are already here. I, for one, am in the seventh ward and I am low income. And so the statement that we don't exist is not true. And, um, and demographics hide that. And when you talk to residents, you'll find out more, which is what everyone else is saying, is talk to the residents. Um, so my comment has to do with commit to building community resiliency and prosperity within with natural affordable housing and local landlord rentals to immediately address immediately address our diversity and well-being deficits with additional funding via the city of Evanston's ARPA funds. And when you think of ARPA, that not that what it was supposed to do? Stabilize our community and increase increase diversity, not decrease it and the Northwestern Stadium project in terms of public benefits. We need to conduct town halls, again, going back to participation that encourages creative ways, creative, peaceful, wonderful ways, opportunities to address these concerns across wards. And they do exist across wards. And so what Claire Kelly notes is really true across wards. It's not just with regard to any particular person or ward. It, it exists and you can talk to people and find out that it does exist that way. And I just want to say that with my all my heart that the, all the people in front of me spoke from their heart in the same direction in terms of including pe more people, not excluding people by assuming things that aren't true. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll conclude public comment with a written comment that was submitted uh, by Malika Gardner to be read by Clerk Mendoza. So was there was there a difficulty locating the sign-up sheet? Is that correct? All right. Um, what we're going to do is uh, the city manager will place the sign-up sheet in the back of the room while Ms. Gardner's comment is being read uh, for a quick opportunity for folks who did not uh, get a chance to sign up to do so. Uh, Clerk Mendoza. Um. Mayor Biss and Alderman, um, Alderperson Melissa Wynn, because you are both huge supporters in how Evanston Reparations Program is currently operating, please explain how the Reparations Committee made an amendment to the program to grant only two recipients who did not qualify to receive 50K di direct cash payments, but they would not support Alderperson Devon Reed's motion to amend the program for all to have the same option. Mayor Daniel Biss and Alderman, Alderperson Melissa Wynn, you both support black people receiving two new toilets, showers, windows, 
and bank loans as their reparations, but would not support direct cash payments, which was what the community always wanted three years ago. Please explain to Black Evanston how the Reparations Committee is allowed to pass a vote to distribute cash funds without it going through City Council first. Um, and I also want to add that um, that was from Evanston Live TV, um, Malika Gardner, and I wanted to make sure for the record um, that Council Member Harris is on Zoom. Yes, thank you for the clarification. Councilmember Harris uh, should have been added to the role in the beginning of the evening. I think there were technical issues. Uh, we now have three people who have uh, signed up to give public comment. Additionally, in person, uh, Haley Guillaume, followed by Radhika Suits, and then Ray Friedman. Good evening, council members. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, communicate this for the record. My name is Haley Guy, and I'm speaking on behalf of the legal stakeholder in the development relating to items P2 and P3 on your agenda. I know it's being introduced today, so there's no vote expected, but we do want to make known to the city council substantial reversible error that needs to be considered prior to a vote on this item. Um, both projects, 1801, 1805, and 1811, 1815, must be denied for their burden on the adjacent property at 1817 Church Street and for the excessive release sought from the zoning code. Uh, in where we are, how we got here, uh, the council needs to know uh, that both LUC and the Planning and Development Committee ought to have uh, proceeded in a way that was, in, that was consistent with mun the municipal code. That did not happen. Uh, certainly, the LUC erred in recommending the 1811 to 1815 application for approval due to a lack of complete find fact finding in its conclusions as to each major variation requested, improper consideration of the potential phasing out of the West Evanston Overlay District, and undue weight pl placed on HODC's claim of affordable housing to the exclusion of the other six standards set out in the Evanston Zoning Code and required uh, under the Zoning Code. We'd also like to highlight that the uh, Planning and Development Committee uh, changed the nature of the submission uh, during the uh, during the hearing itself, which we would argue requires public comment and uh, certainly additional public comment on the change in the height as well as um, input from the Land Use Commission. Also, the uh, Historic Preservation Commission, as required under the uh, an, an Evanston ordinance, uh, must weigh in on something that impacts or adversely affects an adjoining historic landmark, which 1817 Church Street is. We would direct City Council before any vote is taking on, taken on this matter or called on this matter to refer to our written testimony at both the Land Use Commission hearing and the Planning and Development Committee hearing for its um, thoughts. The idea that the Council would be presented with a uh, item for consideration, an introduction at this meeting that's substantially different from what the Land Use Commission heard and issued recommendations on is frankly astounding. And again, you have the opportunity to correct these errors. They're reversible at this stage, um, and you know them now through this committee hearing. Uh, so we want to make that clear. I also need the record to reflect that HODC and Mount Pisgah have not been transparent about the uh, the environmental impacts. We have a planning and development committee for a reason, I would, I would suspect, to um, opine on the environmental seconds. impact of the adjoining properties. Um, they indicated on the record that there were no such boring soil boring samples, um, but our experience with them was that they do, in fact, have these samples. So again, the transparency to the council is of utmost importance. Thank you uh, very much. A vote for this development without the expertise of the Thank Historic Preservation Commission is a deliberate rejection of the development that due to its size, scope, and the, scale are preventable. The, Thank you. The next speaker is Raditza Futz, who will be followed by Ray Friedman. Hi. <clears throat> I have said before, and I'm repeating again, Fifth Ward has only one corner that it's designated for commercial use. We don't have any other spot, any other place. We have spent years here planning this, that it should be a place, maybe possibly a jazz center to celebrate history of black people in this community. Maybe a coffee shop. He said we have a coffee shop, but we don't have a single parking designated for a coffee shop. 
Who in a normal state of mind would put a business any place without a single parking spot? This building is going to generate 400 people, 44 parking places, and also the priority has been given to the church. Church is going to have 200 people coming to the church. So we have to keep that in mind, what is going to happen in this corner. And then I am highly urging that no one, no one in a normal state of mind should give to any non-for-profit organization any money unless they have a full financial disclosure. We need to see what they are doing with this money. So far, we, 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 what, what is presented to us, that each unit costs $527,000 of taxpayers' money, $527,000 of taxpayers' money. How do we know where the money is going to? One commissioner from Fifth, Fifth Ward said, we need affordable housing. Yes, we all know that. We provide. We are here for it. But the houses in Fifth Ward are anywhere about 200, 250 houses, not in apartments. She suggested we should have a green roof. Well, how about helicopter landing strip? So since people don't have parking, then maybe we can transport them by helicopter. Certainly in a $23 million proposal, there is more than enough money for something like that. Thank you. Thank you very much. The final speaker will be Ray Friedman. Good evening, everyone. I like the helicopter idea. Um, I, first, I wanted to thank uh, Alderman Tom Sufferden for his article on uh, Northwestern, uh, Northwestern's proposal on the new Ryan rebuild, Ryan Stadium. Um, I, I, was try I have a lot of questions about Northwestern. I talk to a lot of people about how many properties does Northwestern own. Um, what I had looked up, apparently, they were founded in 1850 somewhere. They have 240 acres, about 150 buildings, and that was way back when. Um, so on the 240 acres is more than 90 schools more than 50 university research centers. Um, and by the way, Illinois has the second highest property taxes in the country. Um, I looked up, uh, I know they have a lot of apartments. I don't know if they're owned by Northwestern, not sure. Garrett Place Apartments, Chestnut Place Apartments, Englehart Apartments. Starting rent is 2300 Top rent is 5889 so you're talking about $6,000 a month for rent. Um, they have Kellogg School of Finance, um, Northwestern Feinberg School uh, Medicine, uh, McManus, McManus Center. Um, I've got like a half a dozen different addresses. They also, uh, we look, just look up on, uh, on Google, they have three campuses, uh, one Chicago, one in Evanston, along with sites in San Francisco, New York City, Washington, D.C., and Miami. So I'm thinking, um, I pulled up an article from um, 2017, and it says that um, we're missing out on about 14, four, about 14 and a half million dollars in property taxes, just, and that was back then. Don't know uh, how many properties Northwestern owns, um, it seems that there's a whole lot more that Northwestern can do to partnership with Evanston. And um, at the fourth ward meeting, there was a lady that spoke about Ravinia and about how Ravinia um, pays back to Highland Park. It's a partnership. And so I think that would be appropriate here. I mean, it looks like right now that we are not the city of Evanston. We're the city of Northwestern. So if we're the city of Northwestern, 15 seconds. Northwestern should be paying our $400,000 uh, budget. That would help. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you very much. That concludes public comment for the evening and brings us to special orders of business. Would someone care to make a motion to facilitate, facilitate the discussion as provided for in item SP1? Mr. Mayor, I'll move uh, item SP1 uh, for discussion. I'll second. Second. 
Uh, Council Member Nusma moves uh, just that we discuss item uh, SP1. Council Member Hedakati seconds. Um, I, yeah, there's obviously some detail provided in the packet that was published. So I don't think there's a separate presentation anticipated. Um, so I'll simply at this time open it up for uh, questions or input from the council. Council Member Hedakaris. I was wondering if um, staff had any information that they could share about um, Whole Free and Foods manufacturing facility and um, the likelihood of that coming back before us and what that looks like now. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of the council, city clerk. Uh, by way of introduction, uh, council member here, Harris, I'm Paul Zalmazak, economic development manager. Um, Whole and Free Foods, uh, which is a woman-owned enterprise, uh, local entrepreneur Trish Thomas um, is still working through her business plan and we should have an update, hopefully for the next Economic Development Committee meeting. Uh, the ball is in her court in terms of a decision that she needs to make. And, and just, um, I, just, I'm curious, is the hold up the business plan or the available um, properties in town? Uh, she's she's considering there's two properties. She's considering I, I, I don't want to get into confidential information. Sure. But, yep. Are there further questions or comments? Council member Nusma. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, Sarah, can you tell us what restrictions we have on this money in terms of how we might be able to spend it on, on climate action? Is climate action an allowable an expense under ARPA? Sarah Flex, Interim Community Development Director. Um, Council Member Nusma, it, ARPA can be used for climate action related things, but in the, the final rule and the interim final rule uh, made it clear that it they were looking for things that also met the other requirements of ARPA. That doesn't preclude us from using ARPA under replacement revenue. Um, and um, we have approximately, I mean, in our budgeted bucket, um, we had way less replacement revenue than the city actually has reported to um, the Treasury. So um, barring needing to save some for other things, uh, you know, we need, I've always said we should be careful on some of the items that could be challenged. Um, one of the things uh, that they question is large capital expenses. So one of the things I think we ought to make sure of is that we're not likely to get stuck in a situation where we've used up all our replacement revenue and don't have any room to move something under that. But there would be some uh, room to define something that's CARP that is not already under consideration. I can give you more specifics. I mean, I can look into the estimate of replacement revenue that we need to hold. Thank you. Per, per, especially after we discuss things tonight, some of which are on replacement revenue. And the, the type of feedback you're looking for tonight, uh, we're not making any final decisions tonight. Correct. Right? We're just trying it's, to prioritize from among the items A through M and possibly consider some new ideas. Correct. These are the things that we had been hearing about or had been brought forward, and we even wanted to note the ones like the Whole and Free Foods where there are little hiccups in the in the process, but we'd really like to focus our efforts on things that the council is most interested in seeing move forward, and um, uh, that'll make us more efficient at getting those things. So, if it would help, I'll run through this list real quick and just give you my feedback. These are are my opinions, but the meridian barriers, I like uh, I like that idea. I, I think we need to do more special events in the city that will help us build back uh, from COVID downtown and elsewhere. And I think we have the possibility of leasing those or renting those out to other municipalities for some income to help offset that expense. And uh, the alternative is dump trucks and, and, uh, and snow plows. 
and so I really think this is a, is a much better idea. Um, that speaks to uh, item B as well, the business district improvements. You know, I do want to see uh, you know, as much investment from ARPA and from whatever other sources uh, we can come up with. Uh, invested uh, not only in our in our downtown but our, our other business districts um, because they are struggling to recover from uh, from the pandemic economy uh, the new affordable housing units uh, I would want to make sure that any money we spend there on on, on building is uh, is tied to uh, carp commitments um, and uh, we also want to make sure we're not using the ARPA money when other sources of funding are available. That should go without saying. I'm, no, I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. Um, the uh, health inequities in lower income neighborhoods, I think there's a demonstrated need here. Uh, and uh, my only concern about using ARPA money is that uh, we would run out and not have some ongoing sources and that's similar problem with with a lot of these concepts so um, safety improvements to crosswalks not a huge dollar amount there maybe that would you know, fit better in the uh, participatory budgeting process uh, in any case that's really more of a capital expense um, so I'm not saying it's a bad idea uh, but maybe uh, we might want to use ARPA for something else uh, the living room capital project um, I, I, I do want to prioritize mental health treatment so I like the living room project we talked earlier and said you said we were exploring other avenues for funding let's let ARPA be a backup there in my opinion but um, uh, not look at that as a primary source uh, I'm not sure how much time I have left I can keep uh, I can keep going here uh, item G uh, funding for social services and mental health Again, we get into the ARPA is going to be gone, and we don't want to set up a program that's going to run out of money and uh, then you know, leave recipients and employees uh, uh, stranded in a year and a half. So I, that's my concern with that one. Um, Pulling free foods we talked about. If we can make that happen without ARPA money, great. It's a really exciting opportunity. Looking forward to that conversation at economic development. Um, the rebuilding exchange workforce training facility. Uh, Mr. Zamelzak, if you have some information on that, or, or Sarah, if you do, I know that they uh, they did not get their property that uh, they were looking for, but are they still looking? And is there a possibility of uh, that they'll be able to find another property in Evanston? There's no update on that at this time. Okay. Uh, love to be able to help them if possible. Uh, the Small Business Assistance Program, uh, I uh, really do want to do um, whatever we can to help uh, in uh, our small businesses. Having said that, we're not venture capital. You know, we're not in the business of taking risks and making bets on businesses. So I want to be really careful about uh, making direct investments uh, in businesses. Uh, and at the same time, we have a need to improve our internal processes. And I just had a chance to just glance through the Evanston Thrives report this afternoon. And one of their recommendations was to improve our internal processes. Um, so maybe just that's want to a give better you a use 15 of second warning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, almost done here. Youth violence reduction. We need to keep doing that. Um, and I will uh, be running out of time in about three, two, one. Zero. All right. <laughs> Councilmember Kelly. Thank you. I won't go through everyone. I did um, share, I think, with everybody here a proposal for um, an Evanston small business recovery program um, to support our small businesses recovery and growth fund. I believe you all have it in your email. I also shared the Madison program that I thought was very impressive. Um, I researched, and so I'm actually I'm proposing more. I'm proposing $2 million um, to support our small businesses to recover. Um, most of many cities across the nation, many cities in the Midwest, spent anywhere from 7 to 12% of their ARPA funds on small businesses, supporting them, understanding really, you know, that they, they are the heart and soul of our neighborhoods. Um, they are represent about 50% a, a of the workforce. Um, 
And to bolster the businesses, to help them, to help them get over that hump after COVID means a lot to our city, means a lot to them. It really is a big economic boost. Um, so I, I sent to everybody a proposal, um, again, for $2 million with, and a lot of it is just bolstering existing programs that we have um, through economic development, because we do as a city also when I compare, not only have we spent really very little um, relative to other cities on our small businesses with regard to ARPA, in general, um, our budget does not allocate a lot. So, um, so I'm proposing that we bolster many of the programs that already exist, um, as well as um, expanding those programs to, to include um, other areas for, um, for expansion and development for our small businesses, our existing small businesses. They were, many were so amazing and resilient through COVID. Um, this is an enormous part of our economy. And if we can, you know, help them become stronger, that will um, pay us back many, many times over again. It's in our interest to do that. Um, I want us to show our love to our small businesses. And I think um, that will be tremendously appreciated. And I think two million is not a lot. I would also like to, um, I'd also like to do another round of the guaranteed income, consider the guaranteed income program. I spoke today with, and I'm sorry, I'm forgetting his name at Northwestern, um, about the research, they'll have some data back. I think it, they thought in about three months on that, but overall, a lot of anecdotal, anecdotal just comments, um, really wonderful feedback from recipients about how much less stressed they are when it came to, comes to paying bills. And you know, one woman just recently mentioned how she's just really meticulously following that money and it's really just provided such relief in her life. So I'd like us to consider um, another round of that program, which I think is very successful. Thank you. Councilmember Member uh, Thanks, I'll be really quick. I just wanna put in my plug for crosswalks. It's a $300,000 expenditure. Uh, makes the city more walkable for people of all ages. There's uh, several places around the city that could be safer. Uh, and in the context of all the ARPA money we have, it is not a big expenditure. So thank you, Sarah, for including that. Thank you very much. Is there any further discussion? Council Member Ravel. Um, just to add to basically, I think Council Member Nusma's um, comments uh, for business district improvement, um, the memo didn't mention Central Street Business District, but I have to assume that that's included. It is certainly included in the evidence okay. and thrive. So. Okay, just making sure, since it wasn't mentioned in the memo. Um, and um, the, in terms of the additional funding for the living room, um, are, are our hospital partners considering making a contribution to the living room? I don't know, Mayor Biss, whether you have any insights, is like North Shore, for example, would they be, is that, is that an opportunity for us to? Uh, I guess I would gap? say um, that our approach on this is to be as um, aggressive as possible with okay. fundraising. We've had some success already through the federal government, and I think we've had, uh, we're having continued efforts uh, at the federal government along with what I think it's fair to characterize as promising um, in-process discussions at the state, county, and hospital level. Uh, I don't want to represent that uh, there's any commitments that have been made. That is not the case at this time. Um, but it's something that we're pursuing really aggressively to, to exactly as Councilmember Newsma suggests, you know, reserve some ARPA funding for a backstop if necessary, but really make a strong case to find those resources elsewhere so we don't have to utilize it for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and so just to, if we, we do need uh, this additional um, 350,000 in order to complete the, the money that we need to renovate the building, is that, is that correct? Okay, it's proven to be quite a bit more expensive than we had originally hoped. Um, the uh, additional funding for the social services, that's in our, uh, that's later in our agenda this evening, we're um, gonna be allocating money from our, um, our human services fund and so so I think that's we don't we won't need the ARPA funding for that so that's a little bit more for us um, 
but we our, our list keeps getting longer than the amount of money in our pot. <laughs> Councilmember Harris. No, thank you for recognizing me. So I first want to go on record and say I want to support all of them. You know, we can't do that, but they're great avenues in which we need to do some work. My top priorities are business district improvements. I know that our businesses are struggling. In the second war, we are one of the most um, economically diverse wards. So this would be great help for the businesses in that area. And we're, work, we're potentially working on a Dempster and Dodge um, district. So I'm excited about that. Um, letter C, new affordable housing units. We keep wanting housing and don't have the adequate money and facilities. So I think that is important. Letter E, safety improvements to crosswalk, crosswalks. We've talked about ADA accommodations and our seniors. So that's very important that we make sure that Evanston is walkable, travelable, travelable. Um, that's important to me and to the community. Um, additional funding for living room capital projects. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, my final two are additional funding for social service mental health, but I heard um, council member Ravel say that we had that money. So if we can give that $200,000 back um, and then youth violence reduction programs, since we have um, in the second ward ETHS and district 65 and one of district 65 schools, it's really important that we are working with our students and as they're growing to be adults in the community that we have avenues in which they are safe, which they have um, reduction and things to do in the community. But as I first stated, my first priority is to try to figure out how we get all of these done. Thank you. No one is requesting to speak for a first time. Oh, Council Member Burns. Yeah, uh, I'm not gonna do a better job of explaining this. So I'm gonna just tell me when my time is up but but i support um d uh we currently we don't have any uh we haven't made any arpa allocations um to address the the sobering data uh that highlighted all the health inequities that that we have in evanston um impacting our entire community but um but particularly in in certain census tracts and so there's a, a proposal here or a item here addressing health inequities in lower income neighborhoods at 1.5, uh, develop and implement a two-year pilot program that focuses entirely on public health and community wellness by prioritizing top, top health needs and directing resources most effectively toward health improvement and better outcomes for our most impacted residents. Uh, the, drive for, uh, the drive for the community wellness program is solely based on the city's recent e-plan report that illustrates a clear and consistent pattern of racial and neighborhood level inequity across our health and quality of life data. Notably, the health disparities and concerning trends identified in high rates are chronic diseases and economic distress in specified census tracts. Additionally, these census tracts have the lowest rates of access to health care, healthy foods, and neighborhood walkability. The community wellness program is being designed to make a positive and significant impact by addressing chronic diseases pinpointed in the e-plan such as diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, asthma, and mental health, and well-being. Staff is proposing to partner with experts in the medical health and food industries to develop a holistic approach to mental health and uh, physical health and nutrition to improve the health outcomes of our impacted community members. So I'll hold there, but this is uh, a program that I've been working closely with Director Obo and Director Flax on. Um, uh, through this cohort, it, it We'll, we'll develop a cohort and through it walk um, uh, community members similar to our guaranteed income program through a program that will um, uh, provide them, again, nutrition, um, physical exercise, as well as um, support on, uh, on making progress on the chronic illnesses that, that they're faced with. I think after this program, 
we'll have a better sense of how we can better partner with the community as well as outside agencies to address this need long term. But this is critically important that we don't just put the e-plan on the shelf, but that at least out of a portion of our ARPA funds, we're creating very specific interventions to try to improve health outcomes that we know are leading to uh, early deaths and other issues in our community. That's all true. Council Member Wynn. Uh, yes, thank you. I'll, I'll just be brief in terms of <clears throat> quick descriptions. Um, I do support the $3 million for our business district improvements as uh, and that we should implement, use that money to implement uh, what we heard from Evanston Thrives. Uh, I agree with the new affordable housing units. Um, we need every single dollar we can to, uh, to uh, get more and more of those. And I agree with uh, Council Member Burns on the health inequities in lower income neighborhoods. That's critically important. Uh, the crosswalks, I think, are, are, are also critical. We have had two, one fatality and one near fatality in the third ward just in the last month of pedestrians in crosswalks. Uh, and um, I do think we need to make sure that that living room is open and working. So. Uh, if it takes that additional three hundred fifty thousand dollars, then we should we should use that so we have that going. Thank you. At this time, no one is requesting to speak for a first time, uh, so we'll go back to Councilmember Hedekadis with four and a half minutes left. So I will um, say that um, my priority is that I would put um, item D, addressing health inequities, towards the top of my list. Um, I do think that that's something um, super important. Um, I also think we need to get the um, over the finish line for the living room and get that up and running. Um, you know, post pandemic um, mental health issues are, you know, definitely impact our community and um, are something that are not going to go away. Um, and then I'll um, also say that, you know, another, you know, hopefully easy one and a very important one is safety improvements of crosswalks. Um, I think that's something that all across the city we could use a lot of help for. Thank you very much. Uh, seeing that no one else is requesting to speak, that concludes this discussion. Uh, I want to thank everyone for giving really thoughtful input. It's critical. I think Council Member Revelle's point is, is, is uh, important to emphasize. Um, there are more good ideas on paper than there are dollars left. And so I think having everybody weigh in, as everyone did, um, is, gonna, is really important to make sure that we make a decision that reflects the will of the full, the full council. So thank you all, and thank you to um, Sarah and Paul and others for um, putting all this together for us to react to. This brings us to our consent agenda. I'm told that item A7 did not make it out of A and PW, so it should be removed from, um, from our consent agenda. I'm told that items P2 and P3 also should be removed, P2 uh, because it was held, so also you know, should come off the consent agenda and it will not be eligible to be heard. P3 because it was amended and so should not receive a vote uh, in, a, in the context of a consent agenda. Uh, are there any other items that folks would like to remove from the consent agenda besides A7, P2, and P3? A2, please. A2. Did you say P2 was I, I, held? Because P2 was not held. No. So I'm, it's my understanding the P2 passed committee. I'm sorry, I have bad information. Um, no worries. Did P2 pass without amendment? Correct. All right, so P2 does not need to be removed. So let me re just want to set the table. So I'm going to unremove P2. You all can remove it if you want, but it's not automatically removed. So I've removed A7 that's not eligible for a vote, and P3 that was amended, so needs to have a vote off the consent agenda. Um, and then someone mentioned A2. Is there anything else that folks would like to see removed from the consent agenda? Councilmember Kelly? Um, P2 and P3. All right, so P2 is now re-removed. And P3. P3 was already gone. Oh, I think Councilmember Burns, you might want us to remove A17 for suspension of the rules. That's the um, soul and smoke liquor license. 
Yeah, that needs to be done, yep. Okay. I'll pull A9, yeah. Okay. So at this time we have A2, A7, A9, A17, P2, and P3. Sorry, Councilmember Kelly, would you like A18? That's the Bookends and Beginnings liquor license. Oh, yes, I'd like to. Um... Okay. Right. All right, so sorry, this has been a little bit disorganized. Let me read again what we have so far. A2, A7, A9, A17, A18, P2, and P3. Would anyone like anything else removed from the consent agenda before I entertain a motion? Okay, in that case, I would entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'll move the consent agenda, which consists of everything except A2, A7, A9, A17, A18, P2, and P3. Second. Councilmember Newsman moves passage for the whole consent agenda except for A2, A7, A9, A17, A18, P2, and P3. Councilmember Wynn seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please take the roll? Councilmember Kelly? Aye. Councilmember Harris? Aye. Councilmember Wynn? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Sufferton? Aye. Councilmember Ravel? Aye. Councilmember Hedakaris? Aye. With eight voting in favor and none voting against, the motion uh, carries and the consent agenda except for the five items previous, uh, sorry, seven items previously named is passed. This brings us to item A2. Would someone care to make a motion on item A2? Mr. I'm, Mr. Mayor, I'll move item A2, approval of the BMO Harris Amazon credit card activity. Second. Council Member Newsman moves approval of the BMO Harris Amazon credit card activity. Council Member Wynn seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please take the roll? Council Member Kelly? Aye. Council Member Harris? Aye. Council Member Wynn? Aye. Council Member Newsma? Aye. Council Member Burns? Aye. Council Member Sufferton? I abstain. Council Member Ravel? Aye. Council Member Aye. With seven voting in favor and none voting against and one abstention, the motion carries and the credit card activity is approved. This brings us to item A9. Would someone care to make a motion on item A9? I would like to move A9 approval of contract with Hacienda Landscaping for the Twigs Park Skate Park. Second. Councilmember Hedekadis moves approval of the contract with Hacienda Landscaping for the Twigs Park, Park State Park. Uh, and Councilmember Newsma seconds. Is there any discussion? Councilmember Hedekadis. Yeah, I just want to take this um, time to thank city staff for um, this project and helping us get to this point of, um, you know, passing or hopefully passing this uh, um, proposal. Um, this was interesting because I was involved in the project before I was on council. So I was, you know, one of these people showing up at meetings, making public comment, and I had the um, pleasure to be on the initial um, RFP committee to select the skate park design um, RFP. And I had a great time learning about city um, city processes and working with city engineer Biggs and city engineer um, Stephanie um, Levine. Levine. Um, and so uh, it was interesting to do that, come to council, and then wait for it to come back to us. And I'm super pleased that um, you know they did a great job selecting one of the. Um, best uh, skate park <coughs> manufacturers, and I'm really looking forward to hopefully um, enjoying the park. And this will be a very interesting um, opportunity to do some community building. It's um, skate parks are what I've learned is called like third places where you can be without having to spend any money. Um, it's really um, I think will be a great thing for um, the youth in town and also us old guys who still skateboard. Seeing no further discussion, would the clerk please take the roll? Councilmember Council Kelly? Aye. Councilmember Harris? Aye. Councilmember Wynn? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Sufferton? Aye. Councilmember Ravel? Aye. Councilmember Hedakaris? Aye. With eight voting in favor and none voting against, the motion carries. The contract is approved, and the old, guy, old guys who still skateboard shall rejoice upon the land. <laughs> um, 
This brings us now to items A17 and A18. These are both uh, liquor licenses. Um, if someone would care to make a motion to uh, suspend the rules on both, that would be in order, or we could do them separately. Councilmember Kelly? I'd like to move to suspend the rules for both of these items, A17 and A18. Is there a second? Councilmember Kelly moves to suspend the rules so that both items A17 and A18 may be passed for introduction and action on the same evening. Councilmember Newsma seconds. Is there any discussion on the motion to suspend the rules? Seeing none, will the clerk please take the roll? Councilmember Kelly? Councilmember Harris? Aye. Councilmember Wynn? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Suffered? Aye. Councilmember Ravel? Aye. Councilmember Heracaris? Aye. With eight, voting, with eight voting in favor and none voting against, the motion carries and the rules are suspended. And so at this time, a motion to pass both of these items in a single vote would be in order if someone were inclined to make that motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I would be happy to move items A17 and A18 together. Ordinance 360-23, uh, which is for soul and smoke, and 37-0-23, uh, which is for bookends and beginnings. Second. Council Member Newsma moves approval for both introduction and action of Ordinance 36-023 as well as 37-0-23. Council Member Kelly seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please take the roll? This again will be final action on both ordinances in A17 and A18. Council Member Kelly? Aye. Council Member Harris? Aye. Council Member Wynn? Aye. Council Member Newsma? Aye. Council Member Burns? Aye. Council Member Sufferden? Aye. Council Member Ravel? Aye. Council Member Heracaris? Aye. With eight voting in favor and none voting against, the motion carries. Both ordinances pass and both liquor licenses are granted. This brings us now to item P2. Uh, this is, as I understand it, not the item that was amended in committee. Um, would someone care to make a motion relative to item P2? Yeah, I move uh, approval of item P2. Second. Councilmember Burns moves passage of Ordinance 34-0-23. Councilmember Hedekati seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, Councilmember Kelly. So um, this is integral to P3. I mean, it can't, um, this is reliant on P3 being passed. So I would like to hold both of these um, because the, pr the plan for P3 has significantly changed, and I'm looking at other um, developments where it did go back to Land Use Commission with such a significant change for lowering. For um, I'm looking at the instance at 1900 Sherman where it reduced the height and went back to the Land Use Commission. I don't think it's right for the residents that this doesn't return to the Land Use Commission. I also would like for the um, Preservation Commission to weigh in because this is um, Adjoining it's not just adjacent this this building is adjoining to a landmark building And I think that they will have good insights and some suggestions so that we can go forward in the best way without Undermining the integrity of the historic building So I, I would like to hold both of those until we can also I mean we so, should get well so two things also We don't even have I and mean, we have no one seen the new plan I mean, I, I I'd like to hold it so that they at least come back with some imagery so we can um, get an idea as to what we're voting on rather than just saying, oh, we're gonna knock it down an extra floor or two. So, uh, Mr. Cummings, let me know if I'm mistaken. Uh, certainly a, mo a motion to table item P2 is in order at this time. I don't think a motion to table both would be in order given that the motion currently on the table is on P2. That is correct. So you're free to make a motion to table P2 at this time. You can hold. You can hold, she can hold. Uh, sorry, not table, I hold. told, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. Okay, so I'm sorry, so then I'd like to hold P2 because it can't go okay. through unless P2. So Councilmember Kelly okay. moves to hold item P2, is there a second? The motion fails for lack of a second. Okay. Uh, Councilmember Suffredon, who will be followed by Burns. Thanks, um, I guess a question for um, our colleague, For, from a practical standpoint, what would happen in the next two weeks if this were to be held? Uh, what, what is the information that you're seeking? Is a question for Yeah, you. well, I'm seeking information from the Preservation Commission. It is adjoining, and I think we've heard a presentation um, from the firm that 
that owns and occupies the building and it is a very lovely building and I think that we would be given more information and I think some guidance so that maybe there would be some modifications recommended for this building. I also hate like voting on a building when I can't even see it. So they've just said, I mean, I think it's irresponsible to say, okay, like I know with 1900 when they, when they lowered it, it went back to the Land Use Commission on Sherman. And I just think it's, we're supposed to just kind of imagine what it might look like because it's gone down another floor or two. I think minimally they owe us at least a schematic um, some visual of the new building. Okay, and if I may, um, will the Preservation Commission get in on, in an advisory capacity like that, or do they, I mean, they have meetings and agendas? Yes, yeah. so I did speak this evening with the, um, not the chair, but the, they they are, they can advise, um, absolutely, that is their purview um, to, um, ad, to, to advise on any plan development that will have any effect on any, um, any landmark building, and this obviously will have an impact. Ms. Flax, did you want to add something to that? Thank you, Mayor Biss. Um, the um, Preservation Commission does not have jurisdiction over, uh, it's an independent landmark building. It's not in a landmark district where the um, purview of the commission is larger. The appropriate um, process to ensure the well-being of the building itself is handled through the um, process of having a construction management plan and all of the planning that goes into looking at how you construct buildings close together, um, which has been done successfully in Evanston and many other places. It is, um, again, it's a matter of the actual construction plan, and that can't really even be evaluated by anyone until the drawings are made and you really know what you're constructing and how. And there will be soil testing and all the things that go into construction at that time. Okay. Um, so, sorry. I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I mean. Just, just for the, so Councilmember Suffern has the floor at this time. You're, well. I, I'm subleasing. Uh, so. Claire, go ahead, and then I have a question for, uh, for Nick. Yeah, I'm just going to say, I mean, they do, I'm reading their statement of purpose, is to review proposed plan developments that affect proposed or designated landmarks. So we do have a landmark, so this will affect it. It's adjoining. So what I would like, because I'm not real, I don't feel real good about the architecture, and, I'm, and I think that maybe this is a, you know, a pad commission of experts, and I think they might be able to offer some suggestions to improve the proposal. And I think... We owe it to them. It's a, there's a beautiful building right next to it, and right now we don't really even know what the building's going to look like because they've now changed the height significantly, not by a few inches or feet, but significantly. And so we're just, you know, about to vote on something that we can't even see. I just think it's not, um, that's not the way to proceed. And, not, and I, would, I would put money on it that the plan, that the Preservation Commission would come back with some very good suggestions. They, no, of course, they can't vote it up or down because it's not the actual building, but they absolutely, it's under their purview to um, review it and to assess it because it does affect a, a, a landmark building. Um, a note, this is not a planned development, so I'm not sure exactly how that falls into that, but um, I believe that the um, applicant um, that additional um, renderings could be brought back to uh, council if by the next meeting if these were to be introduced and then could have drawings before any action were, t were to be taken. Um, uh, sorry, can I? Uh, and then Nick, um, this can be held, this is for introduction tonight, this could be held at our next meeting when it's for action as well, right? Correct. So, okay. Um, and have you been in contact with the attorney that spoke in public comment? Are you aware of any city issues there? Uh, I've spoken with uh, my own staff. I've spoken with community development staff. Uh, and tonight was the first night I had an opportunity to speak with the attorney for 1817. Um, I believe that the record has been made. Uh, they've had an opportunity, multiple opportunities for, an, uh, for notice and an opportunity to be heard. Uh, so at this point, it is within the purview of the city council to vote this item uh, up or down in terms of recommendation. Um, I'm, I'm not a, aware of any sort of uh, issues in terms of the city's process at this point. Okay. Um, um, so this is for introduction tonight. We can table it when it comes back for action, which would be in two weeks? Correct. Um, Councilmember Kelly, do you have specific things that you'd like to get before before we vote for an action, because I'm I'm willing to second your motion 
to hold this. I'd rather do it at the next meeting if you don't get the answers you want than do it at this stage of the process. Well, I feel like I can't vote it forward without seeing what I'm voting on, and we right. don't have And it. I'm happy to join you in voting no tonight. I mm -hmm. okay. saw what happened in committee. I think there are enough votes okay. for it to pass, but I, I, will, I will second your motion to hold at the next meeting if you don't get the okay. answers you're looking Good enough. for. Okay, then I will um, withdraw my hold, but I do want to see the design well, just, and the plan. Just hold on. So your your hold is your hold failed for lack of a second, and you're, you've got plenty of time left. You're welcome to sign up again, but I want to go through those who want to speak for the first time first. Uh, Councilmember Burns. Yeah, I'll hold my comments for now. Is there any further discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please take the roll? And so just. Since we had some back and forth, this is this is just on P two, not amended, but only for introduction. Councilmember Kelly, no. Councilmember Harris, aye. Councilmember Wynn, aye. Councilmember Newsma, aye. Councilmember Burns, aye. Councilmember Suffordin, no. Councilmember Ravel, aye. Councilmember Heracaris, aye. With six voting in favor and two voting against, the motion carries, and uh, this item will be on the agenda two weeks from now uh, for action. This brings us now to item P. Uh, it brings us now to item P three. Would someone care to make a motion on item P three? So move. Second. Councilmember Burns moves approval of Ordinance thirty five dash o dash twenty three. Councilmember Newsom seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please take the roll? Oh, no, Council Member Burns. Some discussion. Uh, I would like to make an amendment to this. Um, I uh, uh, forward, uh, sent this email it, to everyone up here, so you should have it in your email. It reads, um, HODC shall work with the Preservation Commission prior to demolition to review the construction management plan, a photo documentation of existing conditions, and a report issued by a certified structural engineer that documents measures taken to ensure the proposed construction activities will not have a structural impact on the landmark building at 1817 Church Street. Additionally, HODC will also ensure that the development complies with Chapter 4-13 floodplain regulations of the Evanston City Code and the Watershed Management Ordinance of the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District prior to the issuance of any building permits. Councilmember Burns moves to amend Ordinance 35-0-23 as just described and as also emailed to um, City Council. Councilmember Ravel seconds. Before we go on, I have two uh, uh, pro procedural questions. First of all, Councilmember, as I understand it, this item was amended in committee. Is this this amendment would be in addition to what Correct. happened in committee? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. And second, um, Mr. Um, Mr. Cummings. Just we have this in writing. It seems clear. Is are you? Do you have clarity about where in the ordinance it would fit? You didn't. So do you have any questions that that you need Councilmember Burns to answer? Um, I'm scrolling through the packet now to okay. find where in the ordinance we would like to add this language. All right. So we'll we'll just stand at ease for a moment. Um, and, and again, I know that sometimes this can feel a little bit irritating, but it, it's important to me to make sure that we don't wake up tomorrow morning with different impressions of what passed tonight. Mayor Biss. Uh, so, sorry, was that uh, Councilmember Harris? Yes, it was. Um, so we're, are you requesting to speak? Yes, I'm All right. sorry. I will put you in the queue where um, we are waiting for a minute uh, just to do a quick legal review of the amendment. Yes, I just want you to know I was yep. raising my hand. Thank you. You're on the list. Thank you, Council Member. Yes. I apologize. It's a very large packet. <laughs> yes. We know. And I want to say the ordinance was not at the top. Yeah. 
This is for 35023, correct? Yes, that's correct. So the amendment that was made at committee impacted the height, is that correct? Correct. And so that would be requ require an amendment to one of the findings, if I'm not mistaken? All right, I got it. <laughs> so you have, you have clarity about what this, okay. Yes. And is there any, ex, any, any explanation that needs to be given in addition to what's been sent in writing to council? No, okay. um, I think what staff will do is just add. So they're under section two, there are six, I'm sorry, seven conditions. So we'll add an eighth, which will be council member Burns amendment. Perfect. Thank you very much. Uh, council member Burns, you still have the floor if you have, want to continue. Okay, in that case, council member Harris. Thank you so much. So I'm, I just, I'm, I'm struggling besides being sick that I, I hear so many voices and I don't get to see the whole room. Um, we're in a city where we want housing and affordable housing, but we don't want it or we don't want it here. And I do look forward to when we get to a place where we change all of our zoning where we can adequately put housing in every single ward. There's nine of us here that should be having housing in our community. So I do look forward to that day. Um, again, I've, I've heard the, <clears throat> excuse me, the concerns on both sides. And it, it's just a hard place that I think we all find ourselves in because there's a lot that say yes and a lot that say no. I always want us to recognize that the loudest voices aren't always the majority. And I just wanted to go on record and say that. So thank you. Council Member Ravel. Uh, well, I'd just like to second uh, Council Member Harris's comment. I think we all look forward to um, basically amending our, making our zoning code, code more compatible with um, expanding the development of more affordable housing in all parts of Evanston. So. I'm hopeful that that's going to happen um, in the next few months that we'll start working on that. Seeing no further discussion, will the clerk please take the roll? And what we're taking the roll on so far is simply Councilmember Burns' amendment to P3, adding in those two uh, brief paragraphs. Councilmember Kelly? Councilmember Harris? Aye. Councilmember Wynn? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Sufferden? Councilmember Ravel? Aye. Councilmember Hedekaris? Aye. With six voting in favor and one voting against, the motion carries and Ordinance 35 0 23 is amended. Is there further discussion? Seeing none, would the clerk please take the roll on Ordinance 35 0 23 as now amended? Councilmember Kelly? No. Councilmember Harris? Aye. Councilmember Wynn? Yes. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Aye. Councilmember Sufferden? No. Councilmember Ravel? Aye. Councilmember Hedakaris? Aye. With six voting in favor and two voting against, the motion carries and Ordinance 35-0-23 passes as amended and will be back on the agenda two weeks for, from today uh, for action. This concludes our consent agenda and brings us to call of the wards. Councilmember Kelly. Uh, no report. Councilmember Harris. Um, no report at this time. Thank you. 
Council Member Wynn. Council Member Nusma. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, April office hours will be uh, Saturday, April 15th. As soon as you file your, file your taxes, you can come join me at Dollop on 1508 Sherman. Uh, and then we are going to have a ward. I'm, yeah, that was office hours. Our, my ward meeting is not going to be the first Tuesday as usual. It's going to be Wednesday, April 19th. Uh, usual place at Robert Crown, and we are going to be talking climate action and sustainability. Councilmember Burns. Just another reminder, March 18th, uh, mobile DMV event and senior resource fair at Fleetwood, Jordan, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. Councilmember Sufferton. No report. Councilmember Ravel. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I Just a reminder about a 7th Ward meeting this coming Wednesday, 7 p.m. in the Parasol Room. Councilmember Hercaris. Just a reminder, uh, Ninth Ward meeting, uh, Wednesday the 29th, uh, vir virtually on Google Meet from 7 till 8.30. Councilmember Nusma is now recognized to make a motion. Pursuant to five Illinois compiled statutes, 120 slash 2A, I move that the City Council convene into executive session to discuss agenda items regarding uh, collective negotiating and litigation. Uh, these agenda items are permitted subjects to be considered in executive session and are enumerated exceptions under the Open Meetings Act as set forth in 5 ILCS 120-2A, sections C2 and C11. Uh, we're not talking personnel, just to clarify. Okay. Is there a second? Councilmember Newsom moves to the City Council to resolve itself into an executive session to discuss the items uh, just mentioned. Councilmember Wynn seconds. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, will the clerk please take the roll? Councilmember Kelly? Aye. Councilmember Harris? Aye. Councilmember Wynn? Aye. Councilmember Newsma? Aye. Councilmember Burns? Councilmember Sufferton? Councilmember Ravel? Aye. Councilmember Hedakaris? Aye. With seven voting in favor and none voting against, the motion carries. And at 9.52 p.m., the City Council uh, resolves itself into an executive session to begin immediately in the Council Member Library.